Welcome to the PLZ Prem Preview with myself, Gabriel Antoniazzi, and Peter Martin. A good day to all of you joining us at home. Don't forget to comment, send us all of your thoughts, predictions, any questions you've got regarding English football this weekend. It's rounds again, the fourth round of the FA Cup. Plenty of mouth-watering ties, none more so than Manchester United against Liverpool. The two biggest teams in the country going head-to-head. -head. And that's where we're going to start off at Liverpool last night in the Premier League, beaten at home in Anfield for the first time in nearly four years. 68 game run, broken. Here's what manager Jurgen Klopp had to say after the full-time whistle. How silly would that be if I sit now here losing against Burnley this game, didn't score for the last three, four games, I don't know exactly. And now they talk about a title race, how silly would that be? So it's just we have to win football games. That's why it was always like this. And for this, we have to score goals. There is no doubt about it. And um, that's what we have to change and have to do better. If things don't work, we have to work harder to, to, to do the right things. No goals in 440 minutes, no league wins in five matches. Six points off the top. Peter Martin, what is going wrong? Oh, I think my team has completely and utterly imploded, to be perfectly honest with you, Gabriel. I'm absolutely gutted. There's six points behind Manchester United. That's your worst nightmare. Over and above that, it could be seven if City win their game in hand. It just hasn't clicked. We all know about the problems in the back line, but the midfield's not right since Henderson's out of there, Fabinho as well. And of course, listen, we can't get away from the fact that uh, when you look at the front three, uh, they haven't been finding the net as regularly as they have. I think we need to come Cut Salah some slack, but just a little hint from the manager there. He's uh, saying he's taking the blame on this one, decisions that he needs to make. Maybe he needs to actually get the front three back out there, firing in all cylinders. Although I noticed quite a few pundits saying that Trent Alexander and Andy Robertson not quite getting the same service these days because teams are working out Liverpool style. Yeah, they certainly are. The fullbacks don't look half the players they were last season. Trent, I think he only completed one of his crosses uh, yesterday. But when I was watching the game, I must say I had a sm smile on my face. Uh, but I was thinking, Bobby Firmino, that's two games in a row, Manchester United at the weekend and last night. He's not, he doesn't even seem to kick the ball prop uh, properly at the moment. You know, sclaffing shots wide. What's going on? Well, uh, the, the key here is, you know, you, you get the likes of Firmino and Salah coming on 57 minutes of the game gone. Liverpool fans scratching their head and wondering, come on, get them on earlier, make changes if it's not clicking. The other thing about it is, uh, as well as you mentioned Trent Alexander there, sometimes it's just taking that extra touch, allowing teams to set themselves. I can't believe it, Burnley, when the commentator said it's 46 years since Burnley last won at Anfield, I thought, oh, there are, the omens are there for Burnley to go and get the win and they jolly well did um, listen um, I don't think Liverpool are going to win the league this year I think they're going to be there or thereabouts in the top four um, but I think they're just off it. you've got Diego Jota out injured you've got Virgil van Dijk it's too many hits and of course when players go off the boil as well then I think you're in trouble and I, I think it's fair to say they'll be in about the top four but I don't think they'll be at the front trying to get their nose over the finish line yeah, 1974, the last time that Burnley won at Anfield. I was wondering if you'd have been working at that game. But no, uh, just, hey, just winding you up, honestly. Yeah, uh, rub it in, rub I'm, it I'm in. I'm starting to think, though. <laughs> starting to think. I think it's five and six, six years this summer that Klopp's been there. Is there any chance it's perhaps not signal in the end, but is he thinking maybe this is as far as I can take this cycle of players? No, no chance. Um, what he will do is he'll probably look, reassess and try and get the confidence back in the side. And then, of course, you'll get players back and and he will have to look at the transfer market and maybe try and spruce things up, just get a little bit of spark. That's the key to where Liverpool were the massive success when I was following them um, relentlessly as a boy. When you had a position of strength, when you were winning league titles, suddenly you would go out there and buy a better player. Um, you know, when Keegan was heading off to Hamburg, what did they do? They got, they got the best player ever in Kenny Dalglish, and they continued that momentum. Even when Dalglish was manager, uh, in comes John Barnes. So that will be the making of Klopp, just trying to cherry pick someone who can come in, give them the spark again, and then on we go. But is it this season? No. No, it's not this season, that's for sure. Is it this season for Manchester United? Who knows? They're top of the league. Pogba firing them to another victory. Uh, if you watched the game on Sunday, it was an absolute bore fest. Some, I've read some people saying that it was like a game of chess. It was a great watch, but 
Terrible game for me. Nil nil. A few good saves from Allison. Uh, United are top, and they are in with a chance, aren't they? Uh, yeah, they're in with a chance. Will they win it? No. I'm sorry. I hate to be so blunt about it, and I'm not being anti-United. Um, but listen, uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, uh, I think he deserves tremendous credit. This is a guy who everybody was talking about, you know, he's going to get the sack. He's been able to hang in there. Fair play to the Man United board. They've stuck by him. Um, Pogba has managed to get through one crisis after another, and suddenly he's starting to play as well. They've got a settled side. My personal view is they should stick with on a regular basis as a starter, Edson Cavani, because I think he has got the movement. He's got the ability to score. He's a real sniffer for good goals. I would stick with Cavani. Pogba's on for him. And suddenly with Fernandez in there, who knows? It's mouthwatering the FA Cup tie um, coming up. But as far as United are concerned, I mean, I'm looking here, Gabriel, at the run of games they've got coming up. And there's, remember, the six points ahead of Liverpool, but uh, City are on their tail. Sheffield United, Arsenal, Southampton, Everton and West Brom. All winnable games in the league. So uh, I'll tell you, they won't, they won't win it in my view. I think City are the favourites to win it. But United are, are, are certainly make a fist of it. And they'll need to win those games convincingly to make sure everybody's treating them seriously. Yeah, they certainly are with a shout. And uh, I'm with you on Cavani. I love him. Just his, his work ethic, his first touch. He plays it one touch. He gets in the box. Uh, the only thing for Manchester United is they are playing Arsenal next weekend. So, unfortunately, that unbeaten run will be coming to an end against the Arsenal. But uh, let's hear from Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. He was talking ahead of the cup game. Uh, he said that, of course, they want to win the cup, but it's the league that will judge their success. Anyone can have a good uh, and easy cup run. I'm not one of those. I never get an easy cup run. Uh, I, I'm never going to never gonna watch a draw ever again because uh, we, we always seem to pick out the, the difficult opponents. So in a, in a cup run, it can be, you can easily get, or sometimes you get to a final without uh, really playing any of the, of the top ones. Just finally on this game, do we think it'll be more exciting than, uh, than last weekend? What are we going for score prediction wise? Uh, yeah, there's a bit of an edge to this one as well. There will be goals in this one, Gabriel. It'll be better than the Snorefest the last Oof. time. Incident, incidentally, when you said Arsenal uh, are going to going to win the league there, or, or at least actually win the games uh, against the likes of Man United, I thought they'd sign Tony Adams and Thierry Henry again. Um, but uh, I think United, uh, United will, um, I think. Uh, might just edge this one. I hate to say it, but I think United might just edge this, edge this one by the odd goal. There you are. Now, I also think United, I'm going 2-1 in extra time. Right, plenty of other games to talk about. We can have a look at uh, all of the big fixtures in the fourth round of the FA Cup now. Uh, we've got Arsenal away at Southampton. We'll be talking about that next. Spurs and City away from home. Also with Chelsea at home to Luton. But let's talk about Arsenal, my beloved uh, North London side. Two signings uh, about to happen, reportedly. Matt Ryan has just joined from Brighton. He'll be the number two goalkeeper to Bernd Leno. And Martin Odegaard from Real Madrid is set to join on a six-month loan to replace Mesut Ozil. Peter, what are your instant reactions to those signings? Not necessarily league-winning uh, league winning additions, but moving in the right direction? Yeah, I'm moving the right direction with Martin Odegaard. I mean, um, Matt Ryan is an, an Arsenal fan. He's absolutely delighted that he's joined his boyhood heroes. And with Matt Macy going to Hibernian on loan, I, I think it's just basically a little bit of backup and safety for Mikel Arteta. As far as Martin Odegaard, I've followed his career very, very closely indeed. Uh, this was a sensational kid at 16. Everybody was chasing him. Uh, the Norwegians got a brilliant left foot on him. He's got great Great skill, great awareness, uh, and he's now 22 years of age. I think a lot of people thought that maybe Zinedine Zidane, because he'd coached him in the Real Madrid B side, would automatically give him the platform to you know emerge at the Bernabeu, but it wasn't to be. Um, and now I think Martin Odegaard has got a real chance to play in a side that likes to play football the way he likes to play it. I think if Arsenal fans were allowed into the ground, they'd be well excited with him. He's got a great wand of a left foot. Uh, and I think creatively, if they get it over the line, um, I think the one thing in their favour is Real Madrid don't want to let Odegaard go to Real Sociedad. Um, and this is the real chance for Arsenal to get a, a brilliant player uh, for the next six months. I think he will make an impact and he'll be a welcome addition uh, to the Premier League.
Yeah, really silky player and fits in the Arsenal style, as you say, football on the ground. Emil Smith Rowe, though, is the man he'll be up against. Uh, the 20 year old has been impressive in the last few games 3 0 against Newcastle on Monday night. Two goals for Pierre Emerick Aubameyang, much needed. And Smith Rowe, man of the match, a cutback to Bukayo Saka for the second goal. So it'll be interesting to see how all of those young players link in. You've got Martinelli in there as well. And of course, the experience of Lacazette. Kieran Tierney was back uh, at, on Monday night. Makes a massive difference having Tierney back. Me and you are massive fans, aren't we? Yeah, I love Tierney. Smith Rowe that you mentioned there. I thought his close control was absolutely superb. And that's really what Arsenal fans want to see. They want to see young, developing talent playing the way that Arsenal are famed for. And Tierney's just a superstar for me. I mean, this is a left-back who um, can defend, but when he's going forward, his delivery into the box is absolutely superb. With him at the heart of that Arsenal side, if they can get a little sprinkling of a superstar here and there, and the young Youngsters uh, getting into the side. I think Arsenal, given another maybe six months or so uh, and a new season, maybe Mikel Arteta could produce something special. I certainly hope so because we like to see a strong Arsenal. Oh, we certainly do. Tierney, honestly, give him the <laughs> armband. Just give him the armband. Uh, but, but before we uh, leave Arsenal, we can hear from Mikel Arteta. Uh, he says nothing's won yet. They are tense in the Premier League after all. I think this is a message to, to all Arsenal fans like me. Just calm down. We want to continue the run. We haven't done anything. We just won a couple of games. There is still uh, a lot of things to improve, uh, certainly in the league table. We have to look much further. We need to be more consistent. And the first half of the season is gone now, so we have another half to play and, um, and hopefully it will be much better. Arsenal against Southampton, then uh, the early kickoff tomorrow. Won't even need your thoughts on that one. Guaranteed win for the Arsenal. They'll win the FA Cup. They do every <laughs> single season. We know how this one yeah. plays out. All right. Uh, come on, let's let's talk about Chelsea then. Another loss for Frank Lampard midweek. 2-0 against Leicester. What do you think? Yeah, two, two wins and six. And I don't think... They we're talking about a sprinkling of gold dust. When you look at Chelsea teams of the past, um, you know, all you have to look at is Eden Hazard in the, in the middle of the park. He was a proper number 10. I don't think they've got anything that excites you in the middle of the park. Um, and I think that's really been to their cost. Um, there's a lot been made of uh, Thiago at the back, but they, they're leaking goals. Um, they're not scoring the way they used to. Uh, I'm looking at the stats. Uh, I I just think that uh, Chelsea at the moment with £200 million pounds that uh, Frank Lampard has spent are under a wee bit of pressure. I think Frank will come under a bit of pressure because you know Chelsea are not exactly uh, famed for sticking by their managers but um, Frank for me eighth in the table, well off it. The expectations were high earlier on in the season when suddenly they were up at the top end and people were thinking you know he spent £200 million. Um, and I, I just think it's not clicked. I mean Havertz, uh, Timo Ver Bernard haven't really set the heather on fire. Um, and from all the positives of, of giving young players uh, their, you know, their chance and their platform last season, suddenly that's been lost in amongst signings that haven't performed. And I, I don't think it's going to be a season to remember for Chelsea. Now, you list all those signings there. They just haven't seemed to work, uh, especially the two coming in from the Bundesliga for big money, Timo Werner and Kai Havertz. Uh, reports coming out today that they're set to stick with Lampard until the end of the season, give him a chance to turn things around, which is what I think is fair. I think he merits that. But they're saying that Thomas Tuchel is waiting in the wings. He knows the Bundesliga. He knows these players. German speaking, perhaps he can get the best out of the big money signings. We'll have to wait and see if that happens. Uh, Frank was in a press conference earlier, a very fiery one, I must say, having to go at a few journalists. He says he can handle the pressure. My concern is not the pressure on me because I can deal with it because I've been um, in football a long, long time as a player at top club. So I understand how, how it goes and it's different as a, as a player. But we, the pressure is to, needs to be positive on the players because the players are what make you a good manager or not so good manager. And that can flip very quickly, as we, as we always see. So it's important that the players don't feel that. I don't mind taking the pressure. The players have to feel a good pressure. They, they want to win games. They want to get some form back. Mm. <laughs> They're not yeah, handling Chelsea the pressure, Gabriel. Around. They're not no. handling the pressure. I certainly That's the not. problem with them. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at them and I'm listening oh. to them there. I watched the Leicester game and I said to myself, I wonder how many goals Leicester are going to win by. That gives you an indication mm. of how far Chelsea have dropped. 
Yeah, and how many Leicester players would get in that Chelsea team? Madison would start. Vardy still gets goals. Tielemans and Ndidi in the middle. Fofana at the back. Uh, but quick word on Leicester. Brendan Rodgers, you know him well. Uh, I know him quite well. Also, uh, for me, the best manager in the Premier League outside uh, Pep and Jurgen Klopp. How far can you Leicester go this season? They were top on Tuesday night. Well, I'm looking at the Leicester situation. I'm saying to myself, you know, the last thing they want is any kind of injuries to their key players. Uh, and Vardy is one of those key players. I just wonder, um, you know, whether they're going to come a cropper over the next few weeks. They need to make sure that the top players are there firing in all cylinders. And uh, listen, uh, Leicester, great uh, manager that they have at their disposal. They play good football. They know how to play in the counter as well. Listen, even Johnny Evans would get into that Chelsea side. And Johnny Evans, I rate very <laughs> highly. But, you know, even he's at the twilight of his career. But he'd walk into the Chelsea side. Yeah, I think they're on for a Champions League place. I can see them in there with Manchester United, Manchester City and Liverpool. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, all we have time for in depth. There's a few other games. Uh, Man City look out for them they're playing Cheltenham uh, Kevin De Bruyne will be out for six weeks though with a slight hamstring tear so not a good one for City fans time for the likes of Phil Foden to really step up uh, Tottenham are playing on Monday night as well they've got Wickham after a week off no games uh, since last Sunday uh, so we'll be looking forward to that that's all we have time for don't forget you can join me on Monday when I have a roundup of all of the fixtures the results the fallout from the cup will there be any giant killings and me and Peter Martin will be back again at the same time next Friday to look ahead to another big week of English football don't forget to follow share subscribe to all of our social media platforms on Facebook YouTube Instagram and Twitter that's all from us for now bye bye 